So now we're ready to import some images into our Lightroom catalog. To do this, we have to go down to the lower left-hand corner of the interface and click on the Import button. In the resulting dialog box, you're going to see that there's a whole pile of stuff going on here. On the left-hand side, we have Select a Source. And in this case, I'm going to be going to my 256 SSD drive. And I'm going to go into my Learning Lightroom Week 1 folder. Now, to get Lightroom to work with this, we can copy these original raw files as DNG files. I choose not to do this. It takes a long time for the files to get imported into the catalog because of the conversion that's going on. We have the next one, which is copy, and I do not choose this one because I'm not copying my images from any device, so to speak. I'm just wanting to add them. Move means to take them from where they currently reside and put them into another directory. Again, not what I'm looking for. I already have my images living in the directory on the hard drive that I want them to be in. So all I want to do is add them to the catalog. So that's why this is selected there. Next, they're going to my catalog. Yeah, there you go. Makes sense. Now, down here, we have something called file handling. I'm just going to collapse that one for a second. File handling. And the first option to make a decision on is building previews. And we can go with minimal, embedded in sidecar, standard, and one-to-one. -one. I'm going to leave it at minimal, but... For an explanation of embedded in sidecar, standard, and one-to-one, -one. I'm going to talk about that later. Let's just say that the smaller the preview, the quicker they'll import. The larger the preview, the slower and longer it will take to import into the catalog. Build smart previews, I'm not interested in that, but a smart preview is a preview that is a raw file, Again, this takes up more space on your hard drive, and there are reasons why you might want to do this, but this scenario is not one of those reasons. Do not import suspected duplicates. That's always nice to have turned on in case you are the kind of person that doesn't delete files off their camera card right after you import or after you've done a couple of shoots, you don't want to start importing everything all the time. So this is always a good thing. Software is recognizing that these files or previously imported files have already been imported and they want to, uh, the software wants to eliminate those. Making a second copy to dot, dot, dot. Some people choose to do this. Some people don't. I'm in the don't camp. But if you decide that that's what you want to do, then click the checkbox and then tell the software where you want that duplicate or second copy of all the files that you're importing. Where do you want them to go to? Usually that would be an external drive. Add to collection. Well, if we actually had a collection and we wanted to possibly add some images to that collection, we could do that directly on import. Close that off. Let's go to the apply during import and let's see now apply during import well the develop settings by default we have a whole bunch of develop settings supplied by adobe and then we have some of these user presets so you can see that i have some presets that i use for this particular project that i work on and then you can see that i was experimenting with Fuji's X-series cameras and all that kind of stuff. So I've got some presets for that. And then I've got some other user presets down here. These guys and these guys could end up in the same directory. It all depends on where and how you put them in. As an example, if I wanted to have all of my images come in as black and white, because I'm working on a black and white project of some nature, then I could actually choose this option as a develop setting and then once they the images have been imported then they'll all be in black and white the next thing is your metadata and that's the metadata template that we created earlier remember i created one this one here called john warren photography 
that fictitious company. There you go. So I can choose that. And then all that information that I had input into that template would get embedded into my images. I'm going to choose first frame photography because that's the name of my company and then keywords. So if I had some generic keywords that I wanted to import in with these images, then I could add them here. Can't really think of anything that I would want to have in all of these, except maybe my name, the word uh, Toronto or Canadian photographer, you know, something along those lines that are uniquely specific just to me, then maybe I might want to have those keywords put in here. Otherwise, any of the keywords that I want to apply to these images will get applied in the library module. So let's just scroll down and see what's going on here. We have all photos, new photos, well, all photos. You can see that we have that checked, all photos. We have 28 folder photos and I can actually collapse this. I don't know why I'd want to, but anyways, you can collapse it. And you can see here's all my 28 files. If I did not want to have all of them coming in here, then I can uncheck all of them. And then I can come in here and click on this, say to this, and say these are the only ones that I want to have imported, then I would just click on one of the check boxes in the upper left hand corner of any one of the thumbnail grid things here and they'd all get selected. I want to have them all coming in so I'm just going to do that. At this point I'm going to click the import button and now you can see that the images are all coming in here and as you see them kind of change their brightness or density just means that they are coming in full value. When they first come in, before you saw that slight little change, that was just the camera's JPEG preview, as opposed to the JPEG preview that gets generated once your images are imported into the catalog.